my name is Terry Anderson, and uh, Wayne has asked me if I would spend a couple of moments with you to talk about uh, my experiences and some advice as the editor of the International Review of Research and Open Distance Learning for the last 10 years. Um, I did write a blog post, and I hope you get a chance to read that. I, I guess uh, one of the things that I don't think I mentioned in that uh, article was maybe to, me, to my ideological mind and maybe to uh, Wayne's as well, is the importance of uh, submitting to an open journal. Now, I know in, in my field, in our field, in distance education, there's maybe 14 journals, peer-reviewed journals in the world, and about half of them are open access and the other half are closed. And they can be in paper or in print. I think that's not as important. But um, the value, of course, uh, of publishing in an open access is that they're accessible to people outside of academia and the professions, to which a lot of our research is is focused and they, they don't discriminate against those who are uh, in uh, developing countries or outside of formal educational institutions. Uh, of course then you have to decide whether it's the most prestigious journal and you know, then you start looking at image impact factors and all of the shenanigans that go around uh, Thompson's SSCI and Scopia's rating systems and I know that in some countries those issues are critically important but in many others, uh, peer-reviewed from wherever is the main thing. So I guess that's what I would call it being the most important is that it's access, that it's open access and that the journal is peer-reviewed. Um, I guess one of the things that you probably already learned in education is to write to the test. You find out what's on the final examination and that's what you write or that's what you study. And I think a good way to, to go about uh, getting your article published is to uh, get a copy of the reviewer's form that the journal uses and see all of the criteria that uh, two, or two or three experts are going to apply to your project and that will help you to, to write to that, make sure you've covered all of those, uh, those points. And I think I would really emphasize the abstract. People are busy and, uh, and so are editors and they really focus in on the abstract. There's some good line guidelines in the APA manual about how what should be in. I mean, it's kind of for a positive, a scientific kind of an article, but it does overview the, the main things that should go into an abstract, so there's good advice there. Um, the, uh, <coughs> the next thing to remember is that almost always, in fact, I'm quite proud to say that after 10 years of being the editor of Erodal, uh, there has not been a single article that has been published without revisions. Sometimes those revisions are quite minor, but usually they're eight, nine, twelve separate items that have to be dealt with. In an article that has been conditionally accepted, uh, usually we accept with condition that they respond appropriately to the reviewer's concerns. Now that doesn't mean that every weirdo thing that the reviewer says to you have to do but you have to be prepared to convince the editor of why that wasn't worth doing or why it's a stupid idea to begin with. Um, and of course, sooner or later, you will get a flat out rejection for one of your articles. It's not the end of the world. There are 14 journals in distance ed and many more in ed tech or education. So uh, don't feel badly about taking the reviewer's advice and uh, trying, your, trying your article at another journal. Um, do remember, of course, though, that it's quite unethical to have uh, your article submitted to two journals at once because you're wasting your time, uh, wasting the time of the reviewers and the editors of at least one of those journals. So I think that, uh, again, I'll refer you to that blog post. Please add a comment to that blog post or a question if you want to continue the conversation. And best luck with your publishing. Bye for now.